All right. All right. Welcome, everyone. I am Aldrema Harper, business organizing strategist and declutter coach to solopreneurs, freelancers, and service providers. I want to welcome you to the Organizepreneur podcast, and I'm so excited about today because I get to talk with my newfound friend and fellow podcaster, Karen Roberts, who is not just any podcaster, okay? She owns uh, an entire network where she hosts other shows on her network. She also coaches six and seven figure coaches and consultants and healers. And she's the owner of Mint, the Mint Wave radio station and Raising Vibrations podcast network on Podbean. Welcome, Karen. I am super excited to have you here. Thank you so much for taking the time to come and talk with me for a little while. Well, thank you for having me because it's not that common that actually I'm the guest. So uh, it's great to be here myself. Thank you, Audrey. <laughs> well, you know, that could um, that could make one a little nervous, too, because you're always on the other side, you know, of that. So that could make the person that's doing the interview also nervous because you, you know, I told you, you were like the Oprah <laughs> of the podcast world. <laughs> Oh, stop it. Stop it. I mean, I'm still finding my feet. Oh, my goodness. Uh, but yes, it does. It does feel a little strange to be this side of it. But yeah, thank you for having yeah. me on. Yeah. Well, I'm super excited because we're going to be talking a little bit about, uh, it's actually like two of my favorite topics. We're going to talk about podcasting for most of the uh, show um, but we'll talk a little bit about decluttering, you know, as well. So those are actually like two of my favorite uh, things to talk about. So, um, so yeah, so let's just kind of get it, get into it a little bit. Um, I want for the uh, sake of the listeners, let them know a little bit about who you are, what you do, maybe how you got started, that type of thing. Well, I, I suppose I really fell into it. You know, I come from a completely different industry, the fitness industry, right? 25, quarter of a century in the fitness industry. So I was just used to, yeah, instructing, I suppose, in a different way, teaching, inspiring, motivating, but on a completely different platform with lots of loud music, you know, in a studio. I owned my own fitness studio for eight years in the Algarve. And... I just, I was just tired, you know, mm. you know, I wasn't, I'm not getting any younger. And I was just thinking, well, you know, how much longer can I continue doing such a physically demanding job? I was also a sports therapist for 27 years. So again, sports massage, it's all, you know, I was trading time for money. And mm. it, you know, if, you know, what happens if I get injured or what happens, you know, I'm just getting tired of this. So I went to a free event to be a speaker and I thought, oh, okay, well, that sounds a bit of me, you know, similar to what I have been doing, except I don't have to get sweaty anymore. <laughs> um, but I didn't know where to start, didn't know what I was doing. And I fell into being a coach for an online high ticket affiliate company. And look, our dream, I didn't know anything about sales, you know, all my life, even with the, the fitness studio or, or the sports therapy, I, I owned sports injury clinics within health clubs. I never had to sell anything. I had, a, I had an audience, right? It was there for me. So I learned the phases. I learned the flow of how to sell other people's programs, right? I'm very good at doing other, other people's stuff. And then when the, when the company shut down in 2017, I thought, well, okay, I'm never going to put all my energy into something that I don't have control over. And I wanted to create my own thing. And I went back into what I thought I should do, which was the health and wellness arena. I went and retrained, although I studied, you know, I was qualified in nutrition, sports nutrition. I retrained. Mm -hmm. And I studied the ketogenic diet and fasting for health. So that's what my business was going to be about, right? I was just about to launch uh, a speaking career. So obviously promoting, well, not obviously, but promoting live events. And then the big thing happened, right? 2019. Yeah. yeah? Mm -hmm. 2019, 2020, you know, it all fell yeah. apart. So lockdown happened and I was like, oh, 
again. Well, I'm going to have to start something again. <laughs> and uh, for my own sanity, I decided to put on an online summit. And I had 20 coaches or speakers um, speaking about from a health point of view, physical health, mental health, and spiritual. And it wasn't for profit. It was just to stop me from going crazy and to try and uplift <laughs> people throughout that horrendous experience mm -hmm. that we all went through. Yeah. And on the back of that, I was approached by a guy who had a radio station who had Mintwave. And he asked me if I wanted my own show. And I just went, uh, yeah. Didn't know why. <laughs> Didn't know what I was going to do with it. You know, I had nothing to sell on the back of it. I just kept turning up because I realized I loved it because yeah. I got to meet amazing people doing amazing things within their communities. And I was genu genuinely interested in why they were doing what they were doing, you know, how they got there and, and what's going on. But I didn't know what I was going to do with it, right? So yeah. what I found was all these different coaches or therapists were doing different things. They were mm -hmm. serving a specific segment of society. Like you have your very specific thing that you're all doing. And I thought, guys, you know, none of you are in competition. Why don't we collaborate more? And literally 10 days after I made, because I'm very much a, you know, I have an idea and I speak it, you know, <laughs> I <don't> <laughs> myself. And I announced this idea that came to me of creating a directory for the public to come and find the right fit for them. And 10 days later, the owner of the station came to me and said, right, at the end of your contract in December, and this was uh, September, October, he said, I'm giving it up. Do you want it? And I went, well, oh, thank you, universe. Yes, <laughs> and now I've got a platform mm -hmm. that sort of started my directory. So I took on Mintwave Radio at uh, the beginning of October last year. And so we have a directory of uh, different types of coaches and therapists. And obviously, they have their own radio show. They have their weekly slot. But as you know, radio, once it's done and gone, it's gone. So... Mm -hmm. On the flip side of that, we created the podcast network as a way for people to, if they miss it live, then they can play catch up. So we have it all on Mintwave. And so it was something that I was, if you told me five years ago, this is what I'd be doing, I would have laughed. <laughs> but it's the best job in the world. Well, as you know, you're a podcaster. Yes. Because, yeah, as I said, we get to meet and like we wouldn't have met, right? Where are you? You know, we I'm would sitting here not in London. Have met. That and is we so keep correct. Meeting, don't we, Al Dreamer? We keep yes. meeting. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we just keep meeting and keep meeting, oh, keep no. meeting. Yeah. It's, um, <laughs> so it's just turned, you know, how can you turn your passion into a business? And yeah, it's now a fully functioning business because we can now offer full podcast production so yeah. it's just organically grown it was never the specific plan but yeah here I am <laughs> I, I, I think what is so fascinating about it you so you really didn't know a lot about podcasting nothing wow that nothing, is nothing, fascinating nothing. I just went with it and, and brave. just enjoyed it and, you know, even then, I mean, you, you talk about decluttering, you know, I had all these ideas because I'm quite a creative soul, I suppose. And I thought, right, well, not only can we have the directory, well, a lot of these coaches that I was getting on calls with, they were really passionate about what they did and really highly qualified and had these great programs, but they were struggling to sell them. And I thought, well, I can help you with that. You know, I've learned the, the process of selling high ticket stuff. So I wanted to do this and I wanted to do that and I wanted to help them with this. And, and I was being spread too thin and mm. I have a tendency of overcomplicating things. And it was only really when I decided to backtrack and simplify yes. and declutter yes. my business. That's really when things went boom. Yeah. Because yes. All yeah. our focus is is on building the radio station and helping meet people set up podcasts. Everything else is sort of, of gone. Yeah. And of course, when you have that clarity. Yes. Yes. You're saying all the, the key words there. 
Well, you know, I, you know I, I've always tried to do so many. I like doing different things. That's a little bit of me, but it, it doesn't work, does it? Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, it's, it's, it's funny you said that because I think, you know, most of us as entrepreneurs struggle with that. We, we're always getting ideas. Like our mind is constantly thinking about, you know, new ways to do this and new ideas. And how about if I try that, if this is not working and things like that. So I don't even know other than, you know, to, well, let me say it this way. Usually like if I'm, if I was coaching someone in the, in that area of decluttering their brain, right. Uh, I would say to jot everything down, all of those ideas, because just because it's, it's not something you can't, can do now, maybe that's for another season, you know, or maybe, um, it's for, you know, some other type of venture or, you know, something, you know, um, and I say that because I, I struggle with the same thing, you know, as an entrepreneur, like, you know, my, my brain just almost never shuts down. And then I want to try this idea and try this and pivot here and do this and go there and do this, try this, you know, and it just never shuts down. And so what I do is if I think it's an idea that's kind of, you know, in alignment with where I want to go, it might be something that, you know, that's worth jotting down for another time. Um, but yeah, you know, you know I mean, you suffer with as an entrepreneur the same thing we all suffer with as you know entrepreneurs and we're all you know real pretty much creative you know cuz we're always creating something we're we were designed to create because we were created by a creator and so uh we can't help it <laughs> you know That's we right. just can't it's help it business. Yeah. But we can't do everything. And we can't I do everything. Was, I was being spread to the thin with some yeah. people I was trying to teach them sales and other people I'm trying to teach them about organic marketing. And it was too much. It gets too overwhelming. And mm-hmm. then your whole week is just messy. Yeah. And then when there is overwhelm and a little bit of confusion, I could waste a whole day and I think, how productive have I been? Now yeah. it's clear on what we're doing we're just offering a one thing that's it yeah and then you can go deeper and deeper and deeper and offer more to your clients in Mm. relation to that one thing and that has definitely helped me since I because yeah I start off and I yeah I do have a bad (laughs) habit of overcomplicating things and then I have to stop and then I have to backtrack and yes it's all about Simplify. I mean, I've always done it, right? I can mm-hmm. remember when I first started in the fitness industry, I started it with Step Reebok, right? Back in 1991, a friend of mine had a step student. I thought, oh, wow, what, you can do this and get yeah. paid for it? And that was the only reason I went into the industry. It wasn't wanting to serve people in the beginning mm-hmm. at all. It was purely selfish. I loved it. And I thought, wow, you can, you can do this, right? And with mm-hmm. Step, you do it for a while and then I'd think everyone's bored. So I would be coming up with these more and more complicated routines. No, it was <laughs> wrong. People wanted the simple. Right. They didn't want to have to think too much. They wanted yeah. to come to a workout, have a workout, have a bit of fun. And we try to, or I was trying to overcomplicate the thing. Mm-hmm. And no, actually, it, every single time, it's no simplify, simplify, simplify. They're okay with that. Yeah, 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 absolutely. I mean, and it's funny you said, you know, you said you started it for selfish reasons. You know, that that that's that's so funny because when I think about uh my uh, organizing business when I started organizing, it was due to my own pack rat tendencies. <laughs> So that's not such a bad thing, you know, to start for selfish reasons because you get to test and try it out, you know, see if it's wor- if, if it's working, right? You know, proof of concept, you know. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, Absolutely. yeah. So, uh, but yeah, I, I I totally totally get that. So, 
I, I, so as a podcaster, as a podcaster, how does this help entrepreneurs? How does podcasting help entrepreneurs? Well, so there's, I think, I think, you know, for me or for what I've seen is that it, it comes into two different categories. Some people want to start a podcast for awareness, for brand awareness. Mm-hmm. Others come in it so they want to want to make money, but actually you can do both. Mm-hmm. Right. I mean, like I said, when I started, I didn't know what I was doing. We were just I was just committing to turning up, which actually is what I found is that's 80 percent of it. You know, so many people give up too soon because and maybe it was because I wasn't coming into it expecting to make money out of it. It, I was Mm -hmm. just going with it. I didn't know what I was doing. Right. Some people, I don't know, they want results too soon. And if the results don't come, because they won't straight away, right? Right. It is a longer term strategy than some of the others, admittedly. But if you can commit to just turning up, Mm -hmm. that is the majority of the work done. But actually, you can, if you do it right, um, you can use it to not just build awareness, but actually you can actually make money Mm -hmm. out of just podcasting. But Mm -hmm. people just quit too soon or they think all that's involved is just speaking into a mic. And as we both know, (laughs) there's a little (laughs) bit more to it, right? Yeah. (laughs) Um, But this is it. Most people get into an entrepreneur will come into it, but they've still got the rest of their stuff to do throughout the day. They've still got their calls to make. They've got to still coach their clients and, and so I think not enough thought goes into setting it up in the correct way. Mm-hmm. But if you do and you grow it and you work on it consistently, you know, once you do get there, what we have seen is once you get to a certain level, all of a sudden there's like a tipping point mm-hmm. and then it's grow, 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 grow. And it's yes, you can actually turn it into a to, into a sales machine if that's what you're looking for. Yeah, yeah. I'm so glad you said that because, you know, it reminded me. So one of the reasons, you know, as I've shared with you, I love podcasting. But when I first started podcasting, and I do with air quotes, I did it. I I didn't know why I was doing it, you know. And one of the reasons I remember thinking was because somebody, when I was a young girl, probably, I say younger, I was an adult in my 20s. And I remember speaking to someone who was actually uh, a radio host. And so at the time, you know, uh, it was a FM radio station. And so I would always call in to request a song, right? And so I remember, I, I think the guy's name was Anthony. I remember him saying, Aldrema, you have such a great voice. Have you ever considered being a radio host. And I was like, no, not, not really, you know, but when he said that it really kind of stuck with me, you know, Uh, uh, and And I thought, Hmm. And you do have a fantastic voice. And what's weird is I, I can't even listen to myself back. Isn't it weird? Like I, I hear myself here and I think I sound one way and I listen to me back and I can't (laughs) listen to And yeah, and here I am doing, this is what I'm doing. But it's, for me, it's about being in the moment. Like none of it's scripted or it's just, I'm getting to have a conversation with somebody, which, you know. Yeah, yeah. What woman doesn't love to have a conversation? Have a conversation, right? (laughs) I know, I know. And, you know, and I love that because it requires more than just a good voice. You know, because if you, it may be, you know, that you have a good voice, but you really don't know how to have a conversation or, you know, <laughs> you know, so, uh, so I love that you said that and it makes it, and, and I feel like podcasting has really uh, kind of leveled the, the playing field because, uh, you know, a lot, a lot of people get in, get into it for a lot of different reasons and, you know, the industry has really exploded. But I also love that you were sharing some of the misconceptions about what people think podcasting is, right? So what are some, you know, like you said, 
that people, you know, if in, in so many words, you know, if they have no idea why they're getting into it, you know, that is uh, probably not the right thing to do, <laughs> you know. So yeah, what mean, are some I things? Suppose, I suppose, I mean, like anything, you know, mm-hmm. I would say to anybody, give it a go, because mm-hmm. like with any of it, you don't know until you try, right? Mm-hmm. You might decide, oh, this isn't for me. So was it a bad thing that you started? No, because you took right. that one off your list and mm-hmm. say, okay, that wasn't the right thing for me. And I suppose everyone's different. Some are more visual, some are audio. You know, you've got to, you know, some want to write. Um, mm-hmm. So for me, you know, writing, I, I, I'm not, not... Me either. Yeah, I'd rather I'm not talk either. it. I'd rather talk <laughs> yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. But that's not for everyone. So it's got to right. be the right thing thing for you mm-hmm. but then you know for a coach say you know it, it is a great way because if they're going to do solo episodes and educate and mm-hmm. of course that's it's an ebb for one it's an evergreen because mm-hmm. it's there people can find it and it is putting that person as the expert in their their field because they can educate with their solo episodes mm-hmm. um for some i uh, You know, that's possibly not enough. So having some kind of mixture where they are then interviewing others, whether that's previous clients Mm -hmm. or whether it's other people in their field, people who are ahead of them, um, people who may be offering a slightly different take on what they're doing to have Mm -hmm. some kind of discussion or almost like a debate. Mm -hmm. Um, so there's different things that you can do. So it's not just educators, you know, why do people listen to podcasts? Yes. They want to learn something new. Sometimes, sometimes they want to be entertained. Sometimes they just want a little bit of inspiration. And uh, you, what you said earlier about it's leveled the playing field, right? You don't have to be a superstar. You don't have to be a Joe or you don't have to be Joe Rogan, right? To be successful in a podcast. I think these days, People want to see real. Mm-hmm. They want to see the authentic. They, you know, they don't want to hear somebody who's making multi millions that, that they feel that is so far ahead of them. They mm-hmm. want to see somebody that's or hear a story of somebody that's that's got to maybe just the next level because that's going to inspire them more mm-hmm. to take that next step or mm-hmm. to, you know, to to go into that coaching whatever you know, whatever the coach is doing to inspire them to take action. And I think that seems to be it. I think people are, I don't know about Mm. you, but I mean, well, I mean, since, since lockdown, since I've started, I don't even have a television now that people might be Mm. horrified. No, no. You know what? No, that's not weird. That's not weird at all. I think that, you know, Although we we have, you know, my husband and I, we do have um, a television, but we don't watch it like we used uh, to. I, I think people are done with that. I mean, look, I, I've got my, I've got a, a projector uh, attached to, so I can watch Netflix or Prime. So I'm mm-hmm. not saying I don't watch anything, but I can't right. watch terrestrial TV. Mm-hmm. Trust me, I don't know about over in the States, in the UK, it's horrendous. And I just didn't want to hear the rubbish. But yeah. I think... I don't know. Are things changing? People, do they want to hear the the big superstars talking or do they want to hear real people overcoming real challenges that relate to them and their story? And I think what yeah. that's what podcasting has been able to do is bring, you know, I mean, who am I? I mean. <laughs> no, no, I totally agree. I mean, you know, because now you have so many ways of streamlining your, what you want to watch, yes. you know, as opposed to like, you know, when you watch TV, you know, you got to flip to this channel and that channel. And it's like, I don't want to watch that either. You know, well, no, I don't want to watch that. Either. You know, so you have so many, you know, options as it comes to podcasts. And, and I didn't realize there were so many genres of podcasts, you know, oh. I mean, everybody, oh you know, and, and, and it's funny, we have sort of opened even our business up to, you know, originally we were just focusing on coaches, consultants, therapists, and we're like, do you know what? Anybody in business, yeah, anybody, they could be, I don't know, in real estate right. or a tech company, everybody would benefit from yeah. having a podcast because 
sometimes you, you don't know what that company does. You don't have any understanding. You don't want to go and see some fancy sales page that some copywriter has written to sell their stuff. They want to hear the real thing. They want to hear the real thing, yeah. And I think that's what it's done. It, it's, it's connecting companies uh, to their audience a little bit more because the audience will get to hear a little bit, you know, if the owner of a company is having a podcast mm -hmm. and they're sharing a little bit of, you know, information about what they do, they're educating people, they're giving people more of an understanding. It's like a slow build, you know, yeah. and... And when you've when you've been doing it a while, they, you've got a whole backlog of episodes that they can they can see. It's a bit of validation as well that yeah. you know you, you're still there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, because yeah. for me that's what it was was like when I took over the station. You know, if I hadn't have had my podcast going for what eighteen months prior to that, mm -hmm. I don't know whether why would have some why would have anybody have joined me mm. if I couldn't you know, show that I had been committed for 18 months at least and I hadn't right. shown up. It gives me that extra little bit of validation, a bit more trust. It's building on that no like, and trust, isn't it? Like yeah. she has turned up. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. It all helps. So it will help companies. It will help entrepreneurs build that no like, and trust. So everybody wants to grow their audience and mm -hmm. having a podcast is a great way to grow your audience. But mm -hmm. it's more than that. It's about building influence within that audience as well because they get to see you. If you're trying to all these fake it till you make it types. I know. They're not <laughs> going right. to pick that up on a podcast, right? People yeah. will get to see the real person, how yeah. they are. Yeah. And I yeah. think that is what it what it's doing for people. It is that building on that trust, which is Absolutely. which is priceless. Absolutely. And and you even you said another key word. You, I mean, you just keep dropping all these knowledge bombs. OK, so <laughs> so so commitment. Oh, my gosh. I mean, because it's such it, it's you know, when you it's particularly when you're doing it organically and um, it's it's a slow, slow growth, you know, um, how when we when we say commitment is there like a um a certain amount of time you should give it or what are your thoughts around that i mean i would say i mean like i said when i did it i didn't, really didn't know what i was doing so i i, I suppose I, I hope that we can sort of shorten that journey down because now mm -hmm. we know you know hindsight's a wonderful thing right until right. you get there and you and then yeah. you can look back and you go why didn't I do that from the beginning? Yeah. Well, I didn't know. Yeah, yeah. Right? So, um, you know, it can happen quick, but it's I suppose it's a bit like starting a blog. You know, it takes a while for whatever Google algorithm has Decides. to pick up yeah. on it. And you've got all these different <laughs> podcasts. I mean, there's so many different podcast, direct, you know, platforms, directories. And it, so it is about getting the same content. And I suppose that's why... One of the reasons why I took on the station, because it's like, it's the same content mm -hmm. that, go, that airs on the radio at a certain day and time, mm -hmm. goes on my podcast. Mm -hmm. But also, because we we do, like here, we, we actually do video it, right. the audio goes on the podcast, but then we can stream that same video yeah. into our YouTube or onto Absolutely. our social media. So you've got all these avenues. I mean, what do they call it? Omnipresence. It's yes. just about getting the same stuff. Mm -hmm. out mm -hmm. everywhere mm -hmm. and I think for entrepreneurs when they're always trying to come up with new content new content man you don't even have to do that anymore because oh your God. whole podcast can be broken down into short snippets and you can use that as your content so you know once it's been recorded that's it that's yeah. job done yeah you can break it down you can do the video you can do the audio you've got your content so yeah you know, save yeah. time. Yeah. Like, you know, you're about decluttering businesses, right? Yeah. Why make more work for yourself? If you had the podcast, that's your job. That's it. Yeah. That's, that's your job. Yeah. That's all you need to do. Yeah. I totally agree. I was, um, right before we got on, I was uh, just kind of jotting some things down. Um, and I was, because I love repurposing, right? That is, 
I love to repurpose. And so I was thinking about it, you know, uh, before we jumped on. And so I was like, man, let me think about, you know, what kind of content that I already have. And I'm telling you, I probably have thousands of audios, videos, because I love to, even, even when I didn't know what I was doing, right. You know, because I just, someone told me I had a good voice, <laughs> you know, and I was just recording cause I was re- using SoundCloud and, you know, I had a few people that was listening and things like that. And, but I, I didn't know very much about, you know, how to, how to be omnipresent. Right. But when you think about it as a coach or a consultant or an entrepreneur that you, you provide services, you know, whatever that is, you have content that can be repurposed. And so it, it, there's like no such thing as not having any content. You just got to really kind of dig and figure out what is it that you know, I can repurpose. And so if you don't have, you know, an audio or video or something like that, let's just say you do have a blog that itself can be repurposed into, you know, an audio or a video. And you only need one piece, just like you said, that's all you need is, is one piece. Absolutely. And then vice versa, you know, you do your podcast, if you don't want to write, well, that's okay, you get the transcription, there you go, there's your blog post. That's right. Job done. Yeah. Um, Yeah. Or you can whittle it down into just some simple social media posts. So actually, for me now, Mm -hmm. okay, it's taken me a while, yeah, two and a half years, (laughs) but you realize that, oh my goodness, there I am thinking I've got to create all this new content. Well, I'm doing it every week. Right. And from this year, I mean, I've been crazy. We did three, we've been having three shows a week. I know. I was going to ask you about that, but go ahead. <laughs> I mean, crazy. I was just like, okay, we're going all in with this thing. We just want to, we just wanted to grow quickly and see where it, where it could take us. Mm-hmm. Um, and so then it's like, <laughs> man, I'll never run out of content. <laughs> Exactly. Exactly. I mean, and it's what is, I think was so amazing. Like, um, even as I was thinking about, you know, content, uh, I had done a post on my LinkedIn, uh, profile, uh, seeing if anyone had questions about decluttering, right. And they can just, you know, submit a question to me. Well, that was inspired by someone actually sliding into my inbox and asking me a question. <laughs> and I was oh like, hmm, now there's an idea, you know, uh, because co- content is, is not hard to find, but y- you have to kind of um, be open to inspiration. Absolutely. And so you just said it right there ask questions we've been almost conditioned not to ask because i think again there's this somehow there's this idea that if you're an entrepreneur and people are starting out as coaches they've got to pretend that they've got it all together right right you know i don't know everything (laughs) (laughs) i'm never gonna know anything right but ask ask Mm -hmm. don't be afraid to ask questions i mean i'm we put it on a workshop the only reason i'm putting it on is because I asked, what do you yeah. want to know? Yeah. And actually, some of the answers that came back really surprised me. And I never thought about put, doing a training on it. Actually, a lot of people were asking how to be a guest. Wow. And it wow. was something that I'd never right. thought about. I mean, I'm normally the host, right? So, yeah, yeah. You know, you just sort of take it for granted. Every day yeah. That's what you're talking about. But... Yeah, how to be a guest on a podcast to get the most out of it. Because I mm-hmm. would say to guests, you know, at, at, at the end of the podcast, you know, mm-hmm. where are you going to send them? But they always, oh, you know, this is, yeah, visit me on my website. Well, no one's going to visit your website unless you've got a very clear call to action. So right. all these, it's the little things that you don't really think about. Mm-hmm. And so that's helped me put together some of my trains. Well, I wouldn't have known that if I hadn't asked the question. So yeah, exactly. what you said out there is 
spot on, you know? Yeah. Don't be yeah. afraid to ask questions. Yeah. yeah. And I think, you know, to your point, uh, another, you know, a lot of times we think even in our coaching or consulting or, you know, providing services, a lot of times we think we have to know, we have to have all of the answers when that's impossible. No, it's never, it's never going <laughs> to happen. It's never going to happen. And so, uh, you know, what I tell people is like, you know, look, this is what I've done that, that has helped me to maintain you know, clutter and stay organized and things like that. I don't have all of the answers, right? There are some people that like, you know, like Marie Kondo or, you know, other people who um, offer solutions, you know, for decluttering. I recommend those things. I recommend, you know, other resources because you got to find what works for you. And even in the organizing space, there's not one solution because no, we, ha we all... Right think differently. We all have different experiences and our brain, you know, functions differently, you know, when it comes to that. So my way of doing it may not be the best, you know, for someone, you but know, that, but that's why you are you though, as well. It's not about the competent, you know, so you're more of a collaborative, you've got more of a collaborative approach. Unfortunately, some can be very, comes yeah. from a scarcity mindset, comes from yeah. a place of fear. Yeah. Um, but actually, when people get rid of that and realize that, look, I've always known that not everybody's going to listen to me. Who's that mad English girl with pink braids? And <laughs> like, you know, I'm not going to necessarily um, connect with maybe the more corporate types because that's not my background. And the moment you're like, hey, I'm OK with that. That's yeah. absolutely fine. Because guess what? Over here is somebody who does have that experience mm -hmm. and Absolutely. does come from that background. Mm -hmm. And when we come away from not worrying mm -hmm. what people are going to think about us mm -hmm. and just trust that you will build your, you will build your own tribe, mm -hmm. whatever that looks like. Right. Absolutely. Um, and mm -hmm. not be afraid. There is no, you're right. There's no competition. Mm -mm. You know, mm -mm. there'll be other people doing what I'm doing and they'll doing it in a different way. And, yeah. and it, I'm sure it could be a lot better, but <laughs> <laughs> it's never, it's not necessarily better or worse. It's just different. It's just, and yeah. you go with somebody that, that resonates with you. And that's all yeah. we can do. And when we can find a place of being okay with that yeah guess what more stuff comes it's yeah just, that's how it happens absolutely absolutely well karen so what what are some like last tips or something that you would share with the listeners who are looking to launch their podcast or you know just do what it. what comes do it, to mind do it, do it. okay uh, i think when people over and 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 again, it's just like anything. Maybe if I knew all the things that I know now, mm -hmm. back in the beginning, mm -hmm. maybe I wouldn't have started it mm -hmm. because overwhelm might have kicked in and I'd have thought, oh, I can't do that because I've got to do this, this and this. And so I just showed up. So, And then I've learned things as I've gone, which is not always a bad way because I think a lot of people get stopped in their tracks mm -hmm. because they think it's going to be this, oh, it's going to be too much. Mm -hmm. But so my advice would be, look, just start. Mm -hmm. You're not going to have 100,000 downloads in your first week. And right. even would you be ready for that? Would you have all the systems in place to be able to cope mm -hmm. if you had that many listeners? So just start because... You don't know until you get started. I mean, trust me, I don't think I'd like to listen back to my first one. <laughs> and even that's okay mm -hmm. because you're not going to get it right the yeah. first time, the second time. But if you just make that commitment to just do it mm -hmm. like anything, it gets easier every time you do it. So a few months in, you're going to be like, hey, what was I worried about? Yeah. And then just keep learning, just mm -hmm. keep committing to making it better, to making it grow. And yes, of course, there's 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 lots of things. But even down to, I mean, like 
I didn't have this mic when I started. I started out with something very, very basic. Mm -hmm. But it's the easiest thing to start. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then learn as you go. Just commit to to keep learning about how to do it better and how to grow it. But Mm -hmm. always have, you know, think, why am I doing it? Is it to funnel people into my program? So have I got anything that is going to capture their their mm-hmm. details or something to offer them but they, yeah there's so much you can do yeah. with starting your own podcast so if anybody's thinking about it just do it yeah yeah I, I I couldn't agree more because I can't tell you how many times I overthought something you know and the moment I just went for it you know it was like Oh, okay. Because the thing is, you're, there's this, this philosophy that I believe it's like, there are really no mistakes. It's just opportunities to get better or improve and learn. 100%. 100%. I nearly canceled one uh, 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 not so long ago, actually, because I realized um, my mic wasn't plugged in. <laughs> Right, so mistakes still happen, right? Yeah, mistakes yeah, happen. Yeah. And when I listened back, I was like, oh my goodness, thankfully the, the guest was fine. And luckily yeah. I don't speak a lot really in my shows. So mm-hmm. I let it go because you can get caught up in, oh, it's not perfect. Oh, just mm-hmm. get it out there. It mm-hmm. just get it out there. Mm-hmm. I mean, it doesn't have to be perfect. Like I said, I can mm-hmm. still make <laughs> still make mistakes. <laughs> I'm checking that my mic's plugged in. <laughs> yeah. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, it's okay. It doesn't yeah. have to be perfect. If we waited for things to be perfect, we'll be waiting forever because it's mm-hmm. never going to it's be. It's never going to be. Exactly, exactly. Just be well, you, can't... be yeah. authentic, show mm. up, do the work. Yeah, yeah. I so appreciate you. Uh, so, Karen, share with the listeners how they can contact you. Of course, it's going to be in the show notes and everything, but... What's what what do you have going on now and how do you want people to contact you, connect with you? Well, if you're interested in podcasting, I do have a free training. So okay. go to KarenRobertsCoaching.com forward slash podcast hyphen profits. Okay. You'll get my free training. It's a 30 minute and it's not a pitch. It's not a it's not a oh, you know, you're talking about how much money you can make from pot. It's none nothing like that. It's purely educational what you need to do to get started equipment you know about even getting sponsorship or um, how to monetize it how to grow it very very just educational so Mm. for some it might sound a bit boring but (laughs) we didn't want to do it as like a sales pitch yeah you know know, when you get these trainings you think it's just a pitch Mm. um we do obviously have our program and we do have run workshops uh, that are paid for but i would start there just to see if it's something that's that would interest you but also check out the radio mintwave-radio.com um yes it's obviously music in between and and that's all getting i'm really excited i'm changing all the music it's only going to be jazz funk soul disco house only uplifting music because the whole Mm -hmm. podcast uh, network is raising vibrations we're talking about raising uh changing the world one vibration at a time Mm -hmm. and then you'll be able to see all the other coaches on there we have a directory of coaches so that was the whole idea come and find the right you know what do you need Mm-hmm. We'll have to get you on there as the organizer. Oh, yeah. Show. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. And by the way, I have listened to the training, so it really is awesome. So I, I, I've listened to it several times. So oh, bless. <laughs> it was like I, I signed up once and then I was like, oh, man, I missed something. Let me go sign up again. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I have, uh, you know, it, it's funny. It's trying to find that fit between, uh, yeah, I, I don't know, I think people are done with hearing all the, the sales stuff of, you know, just that side of it. And, and uh, you know, I can go on to trains and I think I haven't really learned anything or, yeah. you know, they haven't really given me anything concrete to go mm-hmm. with. So we wanted to just create something that's actually going to give people the nuts and bolts. Yeah. Um, so really, yeah, so that's the easiest thing. So, yeah, we've got the radio station, but obviously my website is karenrobertscoaching.com. 
Come, mm-hmm. come and check us out, see what we've got going on. Um, but yeah, the podcasting, that's my baby. And obviously the station is, is really my baby. That's what we're looking to grow. The listeners are sort of globally because it's just something a little bit different, you know, all, yeah. all, the, all the shows are, they're all coaches or therapists. That, so they're all serving their communities, whether yeah. that's on a physical, a mental or a spiritual perspective. Yeah. And yeah, I love it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, all right then. Well, thank you so much, Karen. I really appreciate you taking the time to come and have a conversation. This won't be our last conversation because we just keep meeting. <laughs> I know. <laughs> and uh, to all of the listeners. Yeah. <laughs> And to all of the listeners, I want to thank you for tuning in to the Organized Preneurs podcast, uh, where I can help you declutter, get organized, and streamline your business um, in a flash. And so <laughs> I just thought I would add that to that, you know, you know, so, but uh, thank you all for listening. Um, all of the uh, information will be included in the show notes. And so I'm uh, super excited. This will air, I think in a week, I can't remember when I, when I uh, told you, but next week um, it will air. So I'm super excited about that. Thank you so much, Karen. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Let's see. I want to stop the recording. Oops, getting used to this little puppy here. Oh, here we go. Down.